The Honest Money Podcast is powered by 10x Investments, a licensed financial services provider. Consult with your financial advisor and let's 10x your future together. Welcome to the kickoff uh, podcast of 2024. Uh, I thought that it was worthwhile just doing a bit of a wrap of what happened in 2023. Uh, some thoughts about uh, about a little bit about the recent past, so we can look ahead and 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 make some clever and and kind of rational decisions going into 2024. So uh, I don't normally quote a lot of numbers because I think they're boring, but uh, but I think it's good just to give a bit of a context to what happened in 2023. So I, I wrote down some uh, some kind of performances. If we look at world markets, uh, and, and I always look at uh, an, an index called the MSCI um, ACWI, All Country World Index. So that's the uh, developed markets, the emerging markets. It's basically all the stock markets you can get in the world that provide data. Uh, that 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 market generated about twenty percent, roughly twenty percent over over twenty twenty three. Uh, so so not a bad return when you're buying shares. Uh, but important to remember that it was a recovery from twenty twenty two, which was an absolute dog show. So so it was important that uh, that twenty twenty three was a good kind of a bounce from from the year before. Otherwise, we would see investors losing a, a lot of money and a lot of hope. What was interesting about the world markets, though, was uh, there were basically seven shares that that kind of held things up uh, right across the world, uh, and and they've got this name called the Magnificent Seven uh, uh, because they're they're basically all tech companies listed in the U.S. Uh, if it for, if it wasn't for those seven companies, I think the world markets would have generated a return of about ten percent over. 2023. So, so when you've got seven shares adding 10% to the value of the world stock market growth, uh, it just tells you that we've got some very big companies that had a very big year. Uh, and if you're curious, uh, the, the names of those companies are Alphabet, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Meta, and Nvidia. Uh, and and the worst performer for that year was was uh, Alphabet at 49% and Nvidia at over 200%. Uh, you know, those are just ridiculous uh, numbers uh, fr- from companies. You just don't expect to see, you know, a company like Microsoft generating more than 50% growth in in a in a 12 month period. It's such an enormous business that, uh, you know, it it just when it does growth like that, you shouldn't expect it to continue. So, so I think you know, if we look at emerging markets, they, they probably give you, well, they will give you a totally different picture. You know, emerging markets delivered a return of about five percent. Uh, and and that's certainly the experience that South African investors would have had. And and again, uh, important to remember that it, it came off a, a, a lousy 2022 and actually a couple of bad years for for emerging markets. So uh, just in general, I think a lot of investors will look at the index and say, you know, if you didn't own the index uh, and you were in an actively managed fund, or you, you know, you you bought a selection of your own shares. Uh, if you didn't own the Magnificent Seven and basically nothing else, then then you didn't have a great year. Uh, and you look at the index and you're saying, well, gee, the index delivered 20%. You know, what's going wrong with my investments? I, I don't think it's necessarily the right way to look at things. I think you, you need to understand that, uh, you know, seven shares having an unbelievable run uh, is not an indication of, of how markets or investments uh, have performed uh, in actually across the whole board. I mean, when you look at the, the, the S&P 500, which is the 500 biggest shares on the American Stock Exchange, uh, the, the index is up 23%, but, but they, they own the Magnificent Seven in that index. If you just take the, all the shares in the S&P 500 and you, put, you give them an equal amount, an equal allocation, so you take you know, $1,000 and you allocate $1,000 to every one of those 500 companies, you would have generated a return of 10%. And that's probably more realistic, uh, you know, to understand what actually happened for investors last year. So don't be too bleak if you own global investments and, and you generated a return of somewhere around 10%, you probably did well. Uh, if you own emerging market investments, you own the, 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 the JSE, you know, just understand, you know, emerging markets did 5%. That's, that's what happened. And I think it's a critical point uh, to, to focus on for what's going to happen into the future, because you know, as investors, we get we get stuck on the recent past, and we say we generally just say to ourselves, whatever happened in the last year, and especially the last five years, that's most likely what's going to happen in the next year and the next five years. Uh, and and you know, that's called recency bias. The psychologists have even given it a name. 
uh, and and it's so pervasive and and so common that you shouldn't feel bad if that's if that's what affects you. Uh, but what you need to understand is it's a deeply flawed way of thinking about investments. Uh, and and the reason I say that you know looking forward is we we are probably through the worst of the inflation story in in the US uh, definitely and and then maybe the UK and and Europe and also South Africa. And Inflation and and the interest rates uh, that, that were used to kind of manage inflation was the main big story of 2023. That was the thing that caused investors to lose a lot of money right through 2022 and through most of 2023 as well. It was only right towards the end of, of, of the year in 2023 where we saw uh, the, the Fed in America, that's, that's their reserve bank, saying we we think that uh, we don't need to raise rates anymore they, they use very complicated language and they're very guarded it's a, it's a bit like listening to overtrained lawyers who you know actually are going to tell you nothing but but what you have to do is read between the lines and reading between the lines it looks like inflation uh, um, or, or let's just say high interest rates in america are probably as high as they're going to be uh, and somewhere through the year in 2024 we should expect interest rates to start coming down whether they come down you know, in the first three months or the first six months or the last six months, who knows? Uh, you know, don't, don't get fixated on predictions. But, but what you need to know is falling interest rates will be very positive for investors, uh, you know, in, in shares. So it will initially be very positive for investors in, in all shares everywhere around the world, but it will be especially positive for emerging markets because when interest rates are high in America, it's basically like a giant vacuum cleaner. It just sucks up money from all around the world into the US and into short-term cash deposits where investors say to themselves, you know, with, with no real risk, I can, I can lock in four or five percent a year in dollars uh, without, without any worry. Uh, and, and that's a really powerful force to, to kind of draw money away from more risky markets. And, you know, firstly, shares are considered risky. And then, you know, you, you add emerging markets to that and, and they're doubly risky according to investors. So, so it's a lousy time to be an emerging market investor when interest rates are rising and high in america when that trend turns understand that's the really favorable thing that you need to understand about 20, 2024 2025 and onwards is investors are now going to say well uh, you know if i allocate money to emerging markets and interest rates start to fall in america it means that their currencies the, the emerging market currencies are likely to start rising they're likely to start strengthening and their stock markets are, are likely to do well and so are their bond markets. All of those are really good news for emerging market investors and, and then for South Africans who've just had kind of years of, you know, Zoomonomics and then, and then these high interest rates all around, the world, all around the world. So I'm feeling a little bit more confident about, uh, about stock markets in general, and I think emerging markets will, will probably be quite rewarding to investors for in, in, in the next year or three. Uh, you, you know, we never know what happens with uh, w with economics and politics, but, but, but you know, don't, don't fixate on predictions. Just understand that there is a massive tidal wave uh, that's been drawing money out of the world uh, markets and will now start to turn and and pour money back into those markets. Uh, and I think maybe that brings us nicely to to kind of just you know understanding the the, the politics and economics in South Africa, because I think there is always a lot going on. Um, and in 24, uh, uh, we've got a national election in, in South Africa, and we've got a national election in America. Uh, and and the only thing we know about that will be uh, it will cause deep uh, deep uncertainty. There will be politicians saying stupid things, doing stupid things, and and even worse, promising stupid things to to the electorate. Uh, and and most worryingly and most depressingly, the electorate will probably believe them and and uh, vote vote them in again. So. In, in South Africa, you know, the ANC uh, are, are forecast to get, you know, really close to 50%, whether it will be just over 50% or just under 50%, who knows. But, uh, but, but that kind of instability when a ruling party might lose, uh, lose majority is very unsettling for global investors. So, so don't expect uh, the South African markets to, to respond very well to, to the elections until everything is settled, until everyone knows what the new world and the new order looks like in South Africa, you know, whether that's a coalition or it's the ANC taking power again or some new party, who knows. Uh, but, but just to understand that uh, the, the ANC politicians in charge in government will be doing a lot of things now, making a lot of promises 
um, and most of them will be deeply unpopular and very concerning to investors. Uh, in, and I think NHI, National Health Insurance, is kind of you know enemy number one for, for investors, um, you know, both in South Africa and globally. Uh, and and then some other kind of you know kind of almost want to say silly policies that the, you know that the government will try and force through to, to before the election to kind of show that you know they might actually be doing their job for a change. Uh, and and I think just to be clear on NHI, you know, you know, NHI as a as a philosophy and as a principle is incredibly important. We, we know that the healthcare sector in South Africa is broken, uh, and and it cannot carry on the way it is. Uh, you know, even for people who are on medical aids, they're finding the medical aid costs going up, you know, way more than uh, the cost of living uh, in other parts of life in South Africa. And so, you know, there will be a time when very few people will be able to afford a medical aid. So, so we need to find a better mechanism to make sure that more people in South Africa and ideally everybody in South Africa gets access to primary health care and access to, to reasonable uh, health care at hospitals when, when, when they need it. Uh, but the answer is not with what NHI is currently proposing, which is basically to break the, the, the private medical industry. That, that's really what they're going to do. That they're, they're telling us they're not, and they're saying, don't worry, we've got this. But you know, we need to understand that there isn't one thing that, uh, that, that the government's got right, whether it be UIF, uh, you know, Transnet, uh, ESCOM, anything, any big organization, you know, that, um, none of them are working anymore. And so to try and build a mega organization, which is supposed to take care of healthcare in South Africa, uh, investors feel is basically just going to be a route for corruption and, uh, and, and really will just destroy private healthcare. So it's very likely that, uh, you know, if it gets passed all the way through parliament and signed, signed off by, by the president in its current form, it will be challenged in court cases uh, everywhere. Uh, and and uh, you, you know we need to see what that looks like. I, I'm not too panicked at this stage because I don't think it, um, the NHI passes constitutional muster, so so it will be redone. And if you're a cynic, what you would say is that you know the ANC wants to force through NHI now as a as, you know as a policy, and then if they lose the court cases, they can just throw up their hands and say, oh well, we tried, you know, it was the courts. You know, rather than actually working some proper legislation and working with the private sector, uh, they, they're not doing that at all at the moment, which is a bit depressing. If we jump to the U.S. elections, uh, Donald Trump is losing court cases left, right, and center. Um, and you, you know, most uh, kind of um, interestingly, that he lost a court case in Colorado, where the, the Colorado Supreme Court uh, said that he's not uh, um, um, able to stand as the Republican nominee in the country because because he uh, he led an insurrection. And and that only applies to the state of Colorado. It's not national, but but the point is. He's losing uh, so many court cases in his personal capacity in in his business and uh, and then as the ex president that uh, you know I think regulations are or, or, or courts let's say are probably the biggest threat to his presidency. Uh, if it wasn't for that, there, there there is a decent chance that he could actually have become president and and that would have been uh, very comfortable for for uh, investors in American shares and very uh, uncomfortable for everybody else in the world. Uh, and and so I, I'm I'm kind of hopeful that, that, that he, he loses too many court cases to, to allow him to actually stand for, for election. Um, I, I think just, uh, you, you know, if we, if we look at the, the, the other things happening in South Africa, uh, I think the energy crisis is, is real. You know, 2023 was the worst year in South Africa history in terms of load shedding. Uh, and that's not a record you want to break again for 2024. I am very hopeful that there will be a lot of private uh, power coming on, on stream through the year in 2024. Um, and let's hope that by the end of the year and certainly into 2025, that uh, we, we, we will see uh, so much private power taking up the, the, the strain from ESCOM that, that load shedding is at very low levels. Uh, and and you know if we see a lot of uh, you know kind of big structural reform happening in ESCOM where where the transmission grid gets some investments and more private power can be added to the grid, uh, you know even better. But uh, without relying on ESCOM doing a better job than it has, we 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 are hopeful that uh, that we will see a lot better performance in the energy sector just because of our private industry. Uh, I think the same will apply to Transnet. You know, a private industry is going to get heavily involved in the ports and in the rails, uh, and and start to fix Transnet, and 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 that's really important. So, so I think that there will be some kind of nice tailwinds for a change. You know, both both global globally and and then in South Africa, the, the elections are are a concern just because they're uncertain. And uh, you know, if I had to dream my scenario, it would be that uh, you, you know we end up in a coalition 
of the ANC and the DA, in fact, um, you know, as, as the kind of ruling coalition in South Africa. And while they won't agree on any um, p political ideas, they, they might just agree on service delivery and, and hopefully, uh, you know, sort out some of the corruption. So, so that would be my dream uh, for, 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 for 2024, but, uh, but I guess we need to see what that looks like. Uh, I think for investors, you know, who, who've kind of not had a great time in the last couple of years, uh, you know, investing often is just a patience game. And, and sometimes it's just staying invested and, and letting your investments ride uh, that, that actually, you know, that becomes the reason why you are successful. So, so if you're looking at your, your portfolio over 2023 and 2022 and, and, and wondering, you know, if, if things are ever going to get better and shouldn't you just keep your money in a money market account, uh, I think it's not a good time to be a cash investor. I think, uh, you know, we're going to find interest rates coming down. Uh, we're going to see, uh, you know, shares going up, bonds going up. Um, the RAND might well strengthen as well, and 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 you know all of that will be positive for investors here. And and equally, you know, if you own shares overseas, that that might be a good time to be a share investor. Um, but I would be a little bit skeptical or wary of the Magnificent Seven. You know, when a company doubles its value or, or, or goes, you know, twice its, um, you know, th or two or three times its value in a year. Uh, the, the likelihood that it does it again in the following year is very, very small. So, so just be patient. Uh, make sure you keep uh, rebalancing, you know, across cash, bonds, property shares. Make sure you've got money in South Africa. Make sure you've got money overseas. Uh, don't get too fixated on on kind of big, scary predictions from, you know, the, the talking heads that want want to create fear or, or greed. You know, make sure you develop your own strategy for your circumstances, uh, and and then just stay the course. And uh, Something new for the Honest Money podcast. I, I want to give you a book to read for for the year, or, or uh, if you're a bit of a reader, then maybe just for the month. Um, it's my favorite book of the moment. It's by uh, an author called Morgan Housel. Um, his first book that, that was really brilliant was called The Psychology of Money, uh, and I think his follow-up book, um, and I'm just going to read it to you because it's, I don't want to mess up the, the title. It's called The Same as Ever, um, and and I think it's you know possibly even better than uh, the, the, than The Psychology of Money. So. So, so do yourself a favor, go, go get that book, uh, you know, just understand how our brains kind of, you know, drive us to make good decisions sometimes, but very often uh, drive us to make very bad decisions and how we get sucked up in, into the cycle of fear and greed, which is a permanent kind of human state. And, and you know, often the trick to, to investing is don't get sucked up into the madness, just stay the course and, you know, plot your own way forward. So, so that's how I'm going to wrap up uh, for, for this the, this podcast. I'm 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 really hopeful that tw uh, you know, 2024 is going to be a much better year for all of us than we had in 2023. Uh, for for some reason, for me, I, I said it at the end of the, the year that 2023 felt like the longest decade I've ever had, and it was only a year. But uh, I, I think that that's that's likely to turn. So so I wish you a, a very safe, very healthy, and very prosperous uh, 2024. Uh, and thank you for listening. And uh, I hope we're going to give you a lot more uh, good content for, for you to enjoy. The Stradivarius violin is considered to be the most emotive instrument in the world. That's why you'll often hear it in investment ads, adding drama and the utmost importance to their philosophies. Or for the announcement of a fancy new fund manager. 10x investments don't need dramatic instruments to seem impressive. They let the results sing for themselves. So 10x your future without the drama. 10X is a licensed FSP.